If you've just discovered WordPress or you can think of yourself as a beginner with WordPress, then this is the video you should be watching. Now you might have discovered WordPress recently or you might have a little bit of experience, but you might not know that WordPress actually powers more than 44% of the entire world's websites. That's right, almost close to half of the entire world's websites are actually built on WordPress. And technically, WordPress, since its inception, the mission of the company is to democratize publishing. So they have made it absolutely easy for anyone to start publishing or just create a website and get their message out there. Technically, it's succeeding in all those regards. But we admit it, WordPress is a little more confusing than it has to be. It's overwhelming to get started and a lot of things that should be easy in WordPress are not as easy as they should be. And this is the inspiration for making this video to clarify a lot of things happening inside the WordPress ecosystem so that beginners like you who are just starting to use WordPress can understand why this is the case. I'll try to explain this in the easiest way possible. And the inspiration for this video came on our channel's comments. One person commented, hey, I've been, I've been watching your videos. I wanted to follow along a specific tutorial, but when I installed WordPress, the options I saw were completely different. So the inspiration came from there and I'll make this video so that hopefully anybody who's just starting with WordPress will have a clearer picture of why this is the way it is and what's the solution to understand and why is there so much conflicting information out there because you might search for a tutorial and you say, hey, okay, this is what I need to do. Then go inside WordPress and completely feel that, hey, the, the options I saw are nowhere to be found. All this I'll try to explain in this short video. Now to understand the confusion and why things are changing or why you might find WordPress not easy to understand, we have to go back in history a little bit and understand the evolution of WordPress. Because the same evolution that happened a few years ago is happening again and that's one of the primary reasons you might find it challenging. So when WordPress basically started, I'd say not when it started, but at least when I started using it for the first time, WordPress had a very similar interface for the admin. The interface was exactly the same, but the post creation process or how you would actually create content on your website used something called the classic editor. It was basically a blank page where you could type content in, you could have a heading and you had some basic options to configure. Now it offered very limited design options, but it's all right. There was no uh, huge demand for great looking websites. People were more than happy to just create content and put it out there and plugins definitely filled in the gaps when it comes to designing some things visually there was few different plugins out there available then you can use those plugins and basically have some level of control over uh, visually designing your website so that was the classic editor and it, it still exists and a lot of people in the ecosystem still swear by the classic editor and they would want to use it so it still exists today the next big change or evolution in WordPress came in December 2018 when WordPress officially announced the block editor. Now the block editor was a far cry or I say big huge leap up in uh, the way websites were built because it gave users the ability to design pages on the fly. You could have visual control over how you would want to place things and it gave the users a lot more freedom to design pages. And I'd like to give you an analogy to explain how big of a difference this was. So think of the classic editor as just checking into a hotel room and you give a, get a hotel room, you have limited options. You go and sleep in the bed, you can't change the sheets, you can't paint the walls, you can't make anything or can't change much. But when you had the block editor, it was like you have your entire room and you can change the room around however you like. So you can paint the walls, even break down the walls if you want to, change things, change the flooring, do anything. So it gave users a visual representation on how they could design the websites. Now, the big difference happened is that when the block editor started, it was not as good as it is today. So it took a good full few years for it to become usable enough or had enough features that it could become mainstream and a large chunk of the audience would shift to the block editor. Now, this is what the challenge was even then. A lot of people who were trying to understand WordPress, they installed WordPress and they were presented with the block editor, but they would give, go and make a search about, hey, how do I do this? How do I do this? And they would be presented with tutorials about the classic editor. And that the same discrepancy is technically happening today as well, which I'll explain in a little more detail, but just to give you a context of, because of this change in the slow evolution of WordPress, 
the a uh, lot of people get confused about why are not they able to follow along a simple tutorial because wordpress powers so much of the internet so many people rely on wordpress being stable so the evolution or the, the the speed at which wordpress can change is kind of limited so it's like they can or they want to move forward five steps but they have to have one foot in the background as well so that people who are still on the old editors uh, can also be supported and they still or the websites are not broken so that's the basic overview of why wordpress is always not so great because they have to ensure that every website on the internet still exists or wordpress with a new update doesn't break it so they want to move forward and they're pushing the boundaries always with do, doing new things but they also have to have couple of hands behind just to ensure that everybody on the internet who's using wordpress can understand what wordpress is and can use it and have basically have or don't get their website broken with an update to wordpress and basically the story that i just gave you is happening again today because in 2022 or early 2022 wordpress announced full site editing or also called fse now this is the next step in the evolution process because as i explained uh, the uh, block editor gave users control over the entire room that they could change things around fse is basically one step ahead of that basically fse tells you or gives you the control of changing your entire house if that's a good analogy so if you want to completely transform everything on your website right from the header the footer uh, changing the content and even making changes that persist throughout the website then fse technically gives you that control so basically if you use fse the ability that you'll get is that hey i want to make this change on my website and every single page that uses this element should completely get this change that's what fse allows you to do it's basically a full site editing experience so basically the idea behind fse is that you don't need to install or don't need to use any other tool or platform or builder to actually build your website everything that you need to build a wordpress website regardless of what you want to do design wise functionality wise should exist within wordpress itself and that is the basic premise behind fse or full site editing and now that brings us to the main problem once again the same story that happened with the block editor is happening with fse technically because it's evolving at a rapid pace there's so many online tutorials that never discuss fse and the problem is that fse or full site editing is the default experience if you install wordpress today so if you set up a wordpress website right now the default theme which is 2024 at the date of this recording has the fse experience built into it so the millions of tutorials the millions of videos or thousands of videos on our channel that you will go and watch to understand how you make a specific change all reference the classic or the block editor because fse is not good enough where its adoption is huge so we can't wholeheartedly recommend it but it's not completely something we can ignore as well and that is the the box situation that wordpress is in right now why it's such a big challenge for people to understand how to use it and i'll admit even me as a wordpress pro has trouble following along all the different changes that happen in fse all the time just look at the terminology there is patterns then there is theme parts and then there's blocks and then there's synced patterns and all the different terminologies keep changing and the context of these terms or the scope of these terms always keeps expanding and merging and then separating so even as a wordpress professional i would say i have a hard time keeping up with all the changes so if i have a hard time keeping up with all the changes how do i feel confident in educating you guys to understand that this is what is happening and still there'd be so much points of confusion even if i try to do a good job maybe one big update in fse would completely ruin all the effort or all the content will be outdated once again so that's the basic overview of why wordpress is so confusing fse great thing a welcome change very much needed but it needs to get there before the adoption starts to happen but the default experience being fse is confusing to new people they don't understand how it's happening and all the millions of tutorials on the internet including thousands on our channel and the entire wp beginner website most of them refer the classic editor or the block editor so since most people will start with a the default theme they install it and they see hey this is not exactly what i saw on that video or the tutorial and of course they will feel overwhelmed but thankfully there is a solution to this problem as well at least for now so if you're a beginner in wordpress and you watched the video till here well thank you now you'll understand how to fix the problem so the easiest way to understand wordpress is because there's millions of resources out there to understand wordpress is to just not use fse right now and how do you do it it's actually very simple i'll overlay some footage showing exactly and describe how it's done 
When you first install WordPress, you will have the default theme on your website, which is the 2024 theme. And if you go to the appearance section and go into the theme section, you will find the editor option. That is a classic sign that you are in the FSE mode. So all you have to do is just change the theme of your WordPress website to something that does not support FSE or has the basic block builder support right now. For example, we wholeheartedly recommend Astra. It's a great theme. So I'll just show you how to install the Astra theme. All you have to do is go into the appearance section, go to the theme section, find the Astra theme using the search option, install the Astra theme, and once it's installed, you'll start seeing familiar controls using the Astra theme. So all the tutorials in the world which have been out there on WP Beginner's website and also on our channel will start to make sense now. And if you want a more visual building experience that you can actually build your website visually, then just use a plugin like Seedprod. Seedprod is a fantastic plugin as well. It allows you to create pages with a drag and drop experience, so it's much easier for you to create. And the pro version of Seedprod allows you to create your entire theme visually as well. So if you want to completely transform your theme, you can use Seedplot to do that even today. So hopefully with this simple explanation of why WordPress is confusing, what is FSE, why is the transition so difficult, and how to just use the block builder experience, which has plenty of education material out there, hopefully you'll have a sigh of relief because now you can use WordPress the way it was intended to be to make it easy to build websites, not the opposite way around. What do you think about this? Have you experienced the same thing or have you another faced another challenge with WordPress? We'd love to hear it in the comments. So make a comment about what you think about this video and if you completely agree or disagree. And make sure to subscribe to upgrade your WordPress education. You're watching Yuvraj from WB Beginner. I'll see you in the next video really soon. Take care.